people go to the Amazon, some people go to the Himalayas, and some people go to Kilimanjaro, and they want to find themselves. You heard of that? People go to the ends of the earth, the oceans, the jungle, they go hiking, they go all over the world looking for God. And this is the place where you can come and find God. Because all he's been looking for all our lives is our heart. And we put our heart in so many things because all we want is love. And we often think a man of God is perfect and a father is perfect. Mom is perfect. The man you marry, the wife you marry, looking for a woman to love you, a man to love you, you're looking for perfection. And you get disillusioned when you find out the truth. That the perfection is in Jesus Christ. And today, you know, those holes and those pieces, every week God calls us to surrender. But this time, when you see Thousands of people dying. There's an earthquake that hit Nepal a week ago. Nepal is very close to my heart because people from all over the world go to Nepal. Nepal is a broken country, full of idols. A small <coughs> country, surrounded by land, absolute poverty. The people always have a smile on their face. They don't know God. A revival has come. For six Years, they stood. When I don't put my, when you cut, my mic's not close to my face because I need to look to that. <coughs> Wonderful people online, welcome to the King Jesus House of Prayer. Today I'm going to talk to you about this day of God. The glory is weighty, glory that we trust that the weighty glory hits your bedroom. And today the oil, the new oil, the new mantles, it's here. We declare that it's in your house, and wherever you are, as we stretch out your hand, that you receive the new oil and the mantles and the glory that God has prepared for you to come into this new season. Amen. So God is bringing the earth into a new dimension. We're coming to a new timeline with God. And in this timeline with God, there's a great testing. The church is coming to revival. And there's a great millions of souls that will come to Jesus. When Jesus comes, he's coming soon. Are you ready when Jesus comes? Put up your hands and tell me who's ready for Jesus to come today. Put up your hands. Put up your hands. If Jesus comes today, put up your hands. He's ready for Jesus to come and take you away. Who's ready? Because once Jesus comes, there will be no time for those things in the past will happen. There will be no time for souls in the family that are going to be saved. You say, you're going to do that, you're going to do that, you're going to do that, you're going to do that. Well, I have you done it. There's not going to be a tomorrow when Jesus comes. You have been delaying with the things you promised God to do. And God is calling you now. He's calling you the remnant right now. There is no tomorrow. With God is the God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. There are things that you promised God, but you haven't done it. There are things you said that you will do, but you haven't done it. Because you say there's a tomorrow. But God is the God of the now. He's the God of the supernatural. Where's your heart been, church? Where has your heart been? Because you came into the kingdom of God, and the day you came into the kingdom of God, you said, I believe with my heart, and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life. Because 
because you put your money in Babylon. In Babylon, you put your money, you put your heart, you put your tears, you put your time in Babylon. Where? Who is your Lord? Who is your master? You will not serve church and God. You will no longer serve two masters. You cannot serve mammon and serve God. You cannot serve the world and serve God. Mammon is the spirit of the dragon that is coming to intervene with the great harvest. It's coming to the nation to snap up the great harvest, but today we declare that that dragon is snapped up by the Spirit of the Lord. Today is your day for decisions. We have been worried with the world. We have been tired because you do not take the Lord seriously. We have rebellion. We are coming to the house of God, but we whisper and speak. Under the glory, we cannot honor the Lord when He appears. The power of God will make you fall and die. When Manoah was a man, his wife was barren. She couldn't have babies. But an angel of the Lord came and appeared to her. And said, you will have a son. And that son shall be a Nazarite. What does it mean to be a Nazarite? It's a remnant church. Consecrated. Holy. Set apart. Sacrificed heart. Separated for the Lord. No unclean thing shall come into your lips. The word says you will not drink any alcohol, any drink. No unclean thing shall come near your lips. But did those parents grow Samuel up in the ways of the Lord? The angel Manoah is scared. How did you grow up your children? That they cannot honor the house of God. Why do the prodigals go away? We have to be. What have you been doing in your house? What has the fathers been doing? What has the mothers been doing? That South Africa, that the children have gone away from God. They are not interested in God. They grew up in the church. Because they look to the mothers and fathers when we don't have a relationship with God. Our children will serve another God. They say, always go to heaven. That's the deception of the end times. They say it doesn't matter how you worship. It doesn't matter if you sin. You will still go to God. He says, once saved, always saved. It is a deception of the enemy that is coming to the body of Christ. Enough is enough, church of God. Today, God is calling you in. There's no one denying God. People are dying on the way. And you see the news. And you see the young people dying. Have you seen? There is more news about death the new babies being born. The people that are dying are not old people. Why are our children dying? Where is our mothers and fathers? I want to speak and call out the mothers and fathers today here. Because I need you to take accountability and stop acting like a little girl. And stop acting like a little boy. You are not 16. You didn't have your baby at 11. Like they have it in India. Are you? You had your baby when you, the day you gave birth, you become a mother. You can't be a teenager anymore and you can't look for other loves. The day you had a son and you conceived and you put your seed into a woman, whether you want that woman or not, you became a father. 
The day you do that, you're not 16 anymore and you cannot act like a 16 year old because your child is looking at you. If you're having a problem with the product of children, then you need to take accountability because you didn't teach them in the ways of the Lord. In your house, is there prayer? Have you built an altar? Is there communion every day? Do your children see you in the world? They will see you going house to house, sitting in other people's house from the morning till night. What do they see you do? Because everything your children saw you do, they do. If they saw you, if you thought you were poor and you were alone, the poor overflowed onto your children. In the spirit and in the natural. If you thought you were drinking alcohol and you were ducking, and your children didn't see it, in the spirit it flowed onto your children and your children are dealing with addiction. If you were touching unclean things when your children weren't working because your heart is broken and you think you can find other lovers and loves of your heart, it overflowed onto your children. If you went from church to church because you can't be committed to God because you don't have a relationship with Jesus and you're looking for a man and woman of God to perfect you, then your children's children will run like a vagabond from house to house. Because God is calling you for a relationship and intimacy. There's no perfect man. And that is why the church has come into apostasy. Men and women of God need an altar. There is no perfect church. But there's a perfect Jesus. And today, that perfection is coming to your hearts. You can't run anymore. You are being arrested today. Enough is enough. Jesus is coming soon. He's calling you to the harvest. You are the harvester. The signal is being thrown into the earth. And the entire earth will be harvested. Where are you going to have to leave? After, you, after the London church and the church of God has taken away, the tribulation comes. And they start to be here. Christians. If you have the mark of the beast, you can't, you will, cannot enter heaven. If you can't come to church, how would you survive in the end times? It's all cool now. It's cool. Everything is cool. Survive. Everything is hip. Every, everything is the vibe. Whatever goes, it's okay. There's no vibe in the tribulation. There's no vibe in the rapture. You in or you out? Where are you? You've been playing church for too long. Too long the body of Christ has been playing church. And today God is speaking to you because it's a warning call. The last trumpet has been blown by the angel of God. The trumpets are blown. And you know what's happening? God is purifying the church. You know what? Too many men and women like you have been broken by a church that is not purified. That doesn't have the true oil. And those children have been let down by you and me. Because if you're a Christian and you say that you are, your friends and your family are looking at you. Look at your life. Look in the mirror. Like Amy says, you're surrounded by mirrors. And if James says, when you look in the mirror and you read the word and God is telling you about your anger, you can't go and say, my neighbor's got a problem. You're having a problem with your neighbors because God is dealing with your heart. You're having a problem with your God, friends at work because God is dealing with your heart. You're having a problem with your brother and your sister and your husband and your wife because God is dealing with your heart. You're having a problem with addiction because God is dealing with the iniquity in your blood life. If you can't build an altar for your husband to get delivered, then your children, an altar for your son to get delivered, an altar for the husband to build an altar for the wife to get delivered, then the children shall all be prodigals. 
they is there a hole in your house? You know, I remember Cindy Jacobs coming to South Africa and she said, in COVID, it's time for South Africa to build an altar. And everybody said, you know, what kind of word is that? We wanted a big word for South Africa because we needed a savior. South Africa, before they looked for the rugby, they were looking for a savior. But God was calling South Africa to build an altar because God knew that we didn't have an altar in South Africa. The reason why South Africa is in this place is because we don't have an altar in the church. The altars are closed. Yeah. In the house, we've never taken the time. We want a word. We run to a prophet. And the prophet, the false prophets are carrying popcorn to wrap you up and tie you up and block everything that you have open before you got to that place because you wanted a shortcut and when you go for a shortcut you're going to get a shotgun and that's what python is and then if you don't understand after you go to a python and invite him to your house and you don't understand where your head is collapsing your finances are collapsing your family is collapsing and you don't know how to take that spirit out because you've got no altar and if there's no relationship with God, and when he speaks to you, before the warning of the huge black serpent of Python that came into your house, if there was an intimacy, you would have the warning. Everything that you've gone through from the time you were born, God breathed into you. He breathed into you. He breathed into you. He breathed life. He set a purpose, a time, a plan, for your life. He knew the mistakes you're going to make. And for every mistake he had a plan. He loved you so much that he's been wooing you and chasing you. And I'm going to say we had a rubble. It's time for you to start chasing God. Jesus. No more God is going to chase you. Prophecies is conditional. You're all about prophecies. If you do not come into that alignment that he's calling you today, the prophecies will not manifest. Mm. It's not a false prophet. It's a deceptive relationship that our hearts are actually tied to our pain. Because all we can ever talk, take, put your tape recorder on your phone and listen to what you speak. My life is a mess. My problem, my finances, my boss, my children, my pastor, my church, everything is wrong. It's what you speak. Because if you speak that, it will be that. You know what? You know why we speak that? Because our heart is in the spirit of pride. Because when pride is wrapped up in me, selfish ambition, I might not be arrogant and think I'm so all that. But another side of pride is sanctity when it's me, me, myself, and I. Can you see my parents are wrong? Can you see my house is wrong? Can you see my neighbors are wrong? No, they all are there to prove you wrong. God put them there to sharpen iron, sharpens iron. You're not going to go into the promotion until you give the self pity to God. Feeling sorry for yourself all your life, you've suffered. God has been preparing you for the call. If we can't embrace the life we had and we can't put down the altar, for the rest of our life we will be in bitterness, offense, unworthiness, rejection, failure. Because what 
is in our hearts, is what will manifest in your life. And when the enemy has been worrying with you because of inequity and inequitous bloodline, you don't want to cut it off. Because often beyond inequity, there's a demon spirit. And if you don't decide, enough, enough, is enough. You don't cut the line. Now today, God is calling you to hold the line. God is calling you to stand with him. God is calling you to stand with Israel. Are you ready to stand? That is the Holy Spirit. Okay? I mean, it's hard, right? <laughs> but boy, oh boy. God means business to church. He wants to give the souls, but you're not ready. Today, you're going to get ready. You are in or you are. And if all the people around you are getting blessed, they buy cars, they buy houses, and they got a house of peace. Don't get upset and say, me, 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 look at me. Look at me. Every time they come, they all come, and they all go into the water. And they're all getting healed in the water. But me, no one is looking at me, and no one can get me into the water. And Jesus said, get up! And walk Take your mat and walk. So God is saying to you today, get up and walk and stand with God. Okay? Because that story, I want you to take your recorder home this tonight. And if you don't think that's you and that's your neighbor or your friend, then today I want you to take your recorder and go listen. If you have friends, if you don't identify with the spirit of self-pity, Okay. Do me a favor, sit here and look at your friend. Your best friend, where you hang out? Where you hang out? Where you spend? You know they want to speak? You know why you hang out with them? They will mirror of you. If you are hanging out with people like that, that talk bad things, negative things, and they're your best friend, it's because it's a mirror. It's a reflection of you. Because we only connect with people like us. It's a heart-soul connection. That's how we make friends. So if you don't believe and don't understand what I'm saying, how serious this is. Look at your best friend, your auntie, your uncle, will you hang out with? And listen to the sound of negativity. If all those things that pop up are deceptive on your media, then don't even go to the neighbor, the best friend. Look at your media feed. If your media feed is deception, then you deal with deception. If your media feed is negative, why go to the neighbor and worry about that? Your media feed, some of us, have, our neighbors and our friends are just the media feed. <laughs> because if you want to be alone with God, you shut the door. You go on the altar and pray. But when we shut the door and we go on the altar and pray, we didn't leave the phone in the other room. The media feed has got no walls. You shut the door, but you didn't shut this door. Now this door has come and attacked your house. And you say, you know what, I'm really tired now. God understands. But you heard from the media feed of deception and you hear from God. And I'm going to tell you about the Bible, about people in the Bible that stood for God and what happened to Samson. Amen? So standing with God and standing with Israel in the end times. Isn't it a test? If we can't stand with God and stand with Israel now, when the real end comes, because we're going into the end times, it's going to get harder. Then if you can't stand now, you're not going to survive what's coming. God is preparing and strengthening you for what's coming. Okay? The true church of God will stand. And you don't have to die. Nobody will perish that stands with God. Because you are a bloodline. You, uh, 
you have carried thousand generations and last week we spoke about thousand generations in Ephesians 6 14 it says stand therefore having been girded your waist with truth truth is the spirit of truth is the Holy Spirit the spirit of truth is Jesus Therefore stand, girded with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. The truth. What truth do you believe in? Who are you? Are you a child of God? Because a child of God lives a life of surrender. They come only to church. There are people here that come three hours before the time to church. No one asks them to come three hours before the church. But it's a lifestyle of sacrifice. The disciples come in three hours, right? Two, three hours before. It's their truth. That's a sacrifice. Because Saturday is a very critical day. But your truth is, my, I live a life of sacrifice. When you when you under the spirit of the Bible, the narcissistic that the world calls deception, there's another truth that the enemy puts a spell on you that you can't understand the truth. Your truth becomes, I'm a nobody, I'm an orphan, my family doesn't love me, I don't have anything, no one cares about me. I'm not going to get the promotion. It's a lie. The truth is that Jesus died for you on the cross. What is your truth? My truth is that Jesus died for me on the cross. When he died, he delivered me. His blood sets me free. All I'm going to do is have the faith to appropriate it. I appropriate wealth because my father is the king. He gives me everything I ask for. It shall be done. I do not live in lack. He's delivering me from pain. I am set free from infirmity. Christ shall go nowhere near my door because the Bible has been thrown down when Jesus came. So I am set free from the spirit of pride. I am being set free from sickness and disease. I am not an orphan because my father, daddy, and a father is my daddy. So anything I can ask for, he is my provider. I do not live in lack. I walk in the glory. When I get up in the morning, demons tremble and fall. Amen. Principalities and powers in my life, in my territory, in my community. I, just, I destroy the sound of my voice. I trample on scorpions and serpents because I carry power, demonic powers, and principalities are shudder and disintegrate at the sound of my voice. Jesus lives large within me because I live a life of consecration, dedication. I put on the full armor of God and I walk in the truth. This is my truth. I am the righteousness of God because I've come into right standing. I'm no more a sinner. I'm no more a sinner. Can you say that to your neighbor? I'm no more a sinner. Because the blood of Jesus has set me free. I am right standing. I'm the righteousness of God. Amen? Now that is our truth. So let's run. Jeremiah 31, 35, and 36. Thus says the Lord God, who gives the sun light by day, Ordinances of moon and stars by the night, who disturbs the sea and the waves roar, and the Lord of hosts is his name. He's got all power. He makes everything good. Why do you have to worry about tomorrow? You do today. He will do tomorrow. Amen. You appropriated by faith. What is it you want today? What did you come in? Darren? What did you come to the service for? What did you come for? What is it that you want from God? What are you 
need from God today? Because he's ready to give you that. Are you ready for it? He wants your heart in exchange. Are you ready to give him your heart? Then the deal is done. Amen? Amen? So whatever it is you came for, we are prophetic. Okay, do you hear any prophecies that are flowing today? Because we've come into a new time. Do you feel the glory of God there? It's a spirit of truth that's in the house. Amen? Hallelujah. So he deserves who does he can move the seas, the oceans, the waves, and give those ordinances before me. Those ordinances depart before me, says the Lord. Then the seed of Israel shall be no more. Just like the sea, just like the sun and the stars, just like the earth, so is Israel. Israel shall never be destroyed. Like the scar, stars in the sky and the sun and the waves and the oceans, so is the eternity and the greatness of Israel. So, just like that, that no one can touch the waves, the light, the sun, no one shall destroy Israel and no one shall take Israel. Because the Lord says that Israel is like that that is created. Like the star and the stars. And so the seed of Israel shall not cease. Just like the sun and the stars shall not disappear. Amen? Amen. It is yet its day. Because God says so. Amen. So is Jerusalem. Amen? Amen? Until Jesus comes because that's where he's coming from. Amen. So what is it the false news you've been listening to? Remove yourself from the feet, from the waves of deception. Today we need to come into the truth. Because the truth will set us free and make us stand with God. What does it mean to stand with God? Stand means to, to make a stand. God is calling you today to make a stand. He's calling you. It means to be established. When you make a stand, you know, on this side and that side and this side and that side. Today you do this and today, you know, weeping willows grow to the ground. Trees grow up. Weeping willows are always complaining. Weeping willows are always weeping. Because they grow to the ground. And when the wind comes, they go this side and that side. They don't know which one they stand. They don't stand with God. Today, they, today they're standing on this side. If everybody worshiping all gods, they're worshiping all gods. Today, in the church, they worship Jesus. Whatever the going is, if everybody brings all these practices, they do this. Ah, it's okay. God understands. The, whatever the word of God is, is what he understands. The word of God is the truth. And if you are reading the word of God, your children will read the word of God. If you are praying, your children will read. If you are coming to church, your children are watching you. And today, your friends are watching you. Your neighbors are watching you. The world is watching you. Are you ready to stand with Jesus? It means to be established, established in God. It means that establishing you as a remnant and eternity has a bloodline. As an Abraham, it means to appoint you, to put a mantle on you, to establish you as the end times are. It means to set a balance. Do you know those things? That, no more like a weeping widow. To stand firm like a soldier with the end times. Because soldiers are not moved. Soldiers know the truth. Soldiers know who they side. They are loyal. They are committed. They don't change today and tomorrow. If they go to the front lines, they will die. Now you are the end times army. Are you ready to stand in the front line? To be ready. To be steadfast and to stand. So God's word is the truth. He sets us free from deception and from the enemy. And God is calling us. But there's all these birth pains. And why we are so scared? We don't have to be scared because God says in Matthew 24, there will be birth pains 
there'll be war, Darren. And rumors of war. Are you ready for the war? Okay. Next week, Darren's going to come sit here in front. Because we're going to prepare you for the kingdom. Amen? <laughs> the word of God begins, there's always both things. And the true sons of God had to stand in this time because the earth groans for the true sons of God to arise. You're a true son of God. Am I right, Darren? So God, the birth, there's earthquakes, there's lava, there's uh, volcanoes that are erupting because the earth is trembling for the true sons of God to arise. There's been, I don't talk about the war in Gaza because we'll all know about the war, but the truth of the matter is there was 50 years from the last attack 50 years later, on the time of the feast, when we were celebrating the feast of Sukkot, the world knew that Israel was suffering. On the time when they were celebrating the feast, like we were celebrating, the enemies came to attack, to alienate the enemies, to rape the children, drag the bodies on the street, hostage, more than 240 children, some of two and four, and take them into the caves. And under the caves of Palestine, there are tunnels. And in those tunnels is Hamas. And Israel decided to stand and fight the enemy. And that's the truth, what really happened. And Israel said, no, I will stand and fight. Because we will protect the land. And praise God that they've overcome the enemy. Hallelujah. So if you've been in the warfare because you've been praying, glory to God, you receive the double portion of the blessings today. God has given that promise to Abraham that those that bless Israel, those that, 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 that bless Israel will be blessed, those that trust Israel will be cursed. Indeed, you've seen the blessings in your life in these times when people are terrified, people are losing their jobs, people are getting retrenched, people are struggling, the land is in famine. But you have seen multiplication and promotion, blessings, increases. So when we stand up, we stand up to the heart of God. And that's why God was talking to your heart. There was a knife that was going, a sword that was released to serve. There was a surgery. God was cutting the things, all the things that was on your heart. There were a lot of things that was on your heart. And I think he said to you remove things today. Amen. So, God, um, it's also a time of great testing. You know, you've been going through a time of testing. But the testing is what strengthens us to endure the times that we're in. The doctrine of Israel, it is a false theology that the church is Israel. So, the word of God says, we do not add and we do not take away. When we add and take away, we bring a curse upon ourselves. And so there's much in the end times false doctrine. So I've met people along the way that come to prayer. And I never understood why their minds are locked with the spirit of mental disorders, insanity, depression, schizophrenia, and a number of mental disorders. And I was absolutely horrified when the Lord said to me, the spirit of error and deception brings a cloud of deception over, over if you submit and receive deception. So that's why we broke that up. Can you feel the release over your minds? At the beginning, we did some breaking, right? We will not succumb to false theology. If anybody's preaching, they must preach the word of God. If it's not the word of God, you don't receive it. Wherever you travel in the world, so any word must be backed up with the word of God. And make sure that that Bible is a true copy of the word of God because that Bible has now been interpreted and changed. Nations are negotiating peace at the same time, they want to give away the land. If they give away the land, the nation that negotiates a peace will come in a judgment. And that's what happened 
in America when they had huge flights because of the negotiating peace and giving away parts of Israel as a negotiation. Now they're asking for East Jerusalem as a peace treaty. So when the enemy says peace, 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 don't be deceived by the lies of the enemy to give you peace and negotiate something and take it for its inheritance. Matthew 25, 32 to 43, if you can go through it, he says, All the nations will be gathered before me, and I will separate them one from the other. A shepherd will divide his sheep from the goats. The shepherd is Jesus. And he will, on the right hand side, he will send all the sheep and the goats on the left. And the king will say, Those on the right, come and be blessed by my father, God the Father. And come and receive and inherit the kingdom of God. By those that has been prepared you from the very beginning. But the goats cannot enter. They have no part of it. Now we are in a goat nation. We have to be a sheep. In a sheep church, in a goat nation. Because we need the covering of the shepherd. We need the entire. And that is why the testing for us is so hard. God is calling the entire world to take their position. Now he's calling you to take your position. Are you a goat or are you a sheep? Sheep submit and they obey. Goats always rebel. You tell them to go this side and they just all bring that side. You tell them to go this side, they all bring that side. That's the goats. Never come in to beg. Never come in to the inheritance. Never come in to call. Never come in to the inheritance. Never come in to the destiny. But the sheep, always obedience, serving God, praying, listening to God, honoring God, not pretending that there's a relationship. It's a heart condition. Because God knows the heart condition. I want to talk about um, too much about all the different um, regions around um, you need to go and look on the map and see that Israel is surrounded by Islamic countries and non-Christian countries. And I should ask um, you know, to put that on for me, but you can look at the map and see because we, we, we need to move with the time. But Azaria is Syria. You know that Israel has always fought Azaria. But Azaria is the first time. Remember the Goliath that David had to start the first time? Ishmaelites are the Arabs. Moab, Palestine, and the central Jordanian. Aduins, Egypt, Agar, Egyptian Patriarch, Gabal, Ishmaelah, and the northern Georgians. God has been asking much to pray because there's been tremendous next attack um, from the north. We have to pray for obedience and for the church of God to arise in Israel. Because there's been altars that are not of God that have opened the enemy to the gates. Avon, Palestine, Northern Jordan, Jordan and uh, Amalek, Amalek, Arabs from the Sinai area, Philistia, Hamas, and the Gaza Strip. They're actually underneath the Gaza. When we come into the house of God, we honor the Lord. Tyre. Hezbollah in South Lebanese, Azaria, Syrian, and Northern Iraq. So, I'm going to tell you about Samuel. Samson. Samson in clothing. I'm going to tell you about Samson in clothing. You know Esther, she stood. You know Saul. Saul. He didn't want to stand, he was standing as a Pharisee. But when God had an encounter with him and he got blind for three days, he encountered God and became Paul and Paul stood. Even Paul, when he was in jail, you know why Paul was in jail? He was fighting about this man that he said that was alive because he saw Jesus alive. That's how he, he encountered God. He saw Jesus. If you see Jesus, you 
you'll be wide awake and petrified. Because even if you're tired, in the glory you will fish if your heart is surrendered. Because refreshing is like 24 hours of sleep. So Saul stood um, when he was Paul and thousands and thousands of Gentiles. He was fighting for the truth. Esther stood because the nation got delivered. She stood for the truth. When I, the whole nation is going to be killed, and all your families are going to be killed. Would you stand for the truth? Esther stood. Samson was a little boy. An angel appeared, and I told you the story of the beginning. So they had a baby, and the little baby grew up. And he's name, I know you like stories, so you're going to pay attention to this, right? So I'm, I'm going to give you scripture. So in 13, they get the angel appears and says, There's going to be a baby. Manoah was so scared. Manoah said, God, let the angel come back. How must I grow this child up? Do you understand what God was saying in the beginning? How must I grow this child up? Let the angel come back and tell me, give me the instruction. Do you want the instruction how to grow your children up? Marinate in the word of God. But he didn't have it, Manoah. So he said that the angel came back. So the angel came back and he said, this child is a Nazarite. He's a holy child. This special child. This child is called as a deliverer. Israel. So, Jesus, don't let anything unclean come into his lips. This child is consecrated, is set apart, is separated for God. So you make sure you grow this child up in the ways of God and don't take this child to any bad places you're going to. Don't engage this child and teach the child bad places. And if you're living with somebody that's doing bad things in your house, get rid of the bad things because this child is holy. Because he's been called by God. I don't know if Manoah and his wife did that because Samson couldn't have turned out such a mess. <laughs> now you want to know why you were a mess? Before you got the message? Because Manoah and his wife never paid attention to the angel when the angel was talking. Maybe they were busy talking and asking, tell us, tell us, tell us now, tell us now. You know how we would be praying and say, God, can I have that? And God, can I have that? And God, can I have that? And God can just fix my nose up. I just need a new nose. So we're so busy making demands that what God is telling us, we don't care. And maybe that's what happened to Manoah. But Manoah asked God for instructions how to grow this child up. And he received that this instruction to say, this child is a Nazarite, consecrated, devoted, dedicated, separated, must abstain from impurities from the time of his birth to his death. Because this child will change the nation of Israel. So we go to Judges 15. He grows up and he sees his first time woman. And he likes this girl. And he's nuts about her. And he says, I must have this girl. He screams at his mother and father and says, Don't get that girl from me. I need that girl now. Can't honor his mother. Doesn't respect his family. How was he brought up? How was he brought up? Maybe he called his mother and his father their friends. He could bully them, harass, and intimidate, and manipulate. And make them do what you want. Mother and father said, please, this girl is not from our tribe, you know. Uh, she's a pagan girl, don't. Just go get her. He was big and he was strong with big shoulders. He, people were spectating out of him. He was powerful. He had might. He had strength. There was power in his head. When he could take down prison walls, he was so powerful that the nation used and I can picture that his mother and father were scared of him. And so the mother and father were made away from the girl and just let everything happen according to what Samson wanted. But the mother and the father of the girl were Philistines. A 
like the story. I want you to go study 30, 40, 50, 60, and all wrong. Because you're going to get more meat and the full six course meal. And the mother and father of the girl's family didn't like him. And so, on the honeymoon day, they said he can't enter the girl's room. And so he went away. And while he's gone, they gave the bride to one of his friends, companions. He found out about it. He had this violent anger. He took a whole lot of foxes and he set them apart. He lit them with fire and um, he sent them through the harvest and this 300, hundreds of foxes burned all the Philistines' harvest. See, they've been doing this harvest thing in the spring harvest from those days. There's been a war with Israel and Philistines. From the very beginning, from the time of David, and so he was very, very angry. So they actually, went, when he went back to get the bride, he still wanted the bride, even though. But what they did to the bride, the Philistines found out that this, they, they, took, they married their daughter to the enemy. They killed the father and the girl, bride. Since he's devastated, he's now in war. He takes over and he's now becoming stronger. Okay? He now sees a prostitute in Gaza, a little harlot, and he goes and spends the time with the harlot, not knowing that all oh, the desecration, the abomination, and the power of the Nazarite, and the consecration. And so, while he was busy, it was a temptation that the Philistines set for him to be tempted with the spirit of God. And so while he was busy with this pretty girl, they all surround him at midnight and waiting for him to come out of this harlot's house. How many people are sitting chats for you when, when you are busy stepping away from God and going to the harlot's house? Harlot's house means anything that's not of God, right? It doesn't mean it's a prostitute. It's a spiritual thing it can be that's taking you out of court because it's a trap to destroy Samson. They set a trap around him and they surrounded him to kill him. They locked him down as he was sleeping. And then they said, they, they were they all were quiet at night. In the morning, they said, daylight, they will kill him. And in Samson 16, at 2, and Samson lay down at midnight and he arose. And he, what he did, he was so angry that they had plotted. His strength was so powerful. He grabbed the doors and the gates of the city of Gaza. And he walked to the city gates. And he took it and threw down everybody. He now toppled Gaza, destroyed the enemy, and ruled as a judge for 20 years. Then he's going to a wife and he checks out Delilah. Why? Because the spirit came with the harlot. And the harlot spirit, there was no deliverance. And the Holy Spirit knocking on the door. And once Holy Tree, God is dealing with something. The Holy Tree in the body of Christ is bound in the name of Jesus. No more Holy Tree in the body of Christ. No more Holy Tree in the church. No more Holy Tree in the house of God. God is throwing down that spirit. Delilah means languishing, failing, weak all the time. We can't manage, fatigue. Can't do anything. If languishing means that, go look at the dictionary. Delilah means languishing. Can't do anything. You always we can't do the things for God. Can't make progress. No success. That's what Delilah came to abort Samson. She was a spirit to abort destiny. You see the dogs that our fathers and our grandfathers and our forefathers open how hard it is to close them. We're going to throw down that spirit of Delilah. It's already been thrown down, right? 
Amen? It also means to not be successful. It means to be weak. It means listless. And this Delilah, he was nuts about her. Madly in love. But she was a trap. And they gave her a thousand pieces of silver to trap Samson and find out why you're so strong. Why are you so strong? You've got the Holy Spirit, right? Everybody wants to know why you're so strong. You've got enemies, right? So they set a trap and they bribe Delilah. So the spirit of Delilah is also corruption. It's also bribery. Because she submitted to that, but she loved Samson. And so they set a trap. And they said, torment him now. She carried tormenting spirits. From the morning till the night. And you know the tormenting spirits. And it that from the morning to the night, I want ice cream, I want ice cream, I want ice cream, I want ice cream. You know that. I'm saying ice cream because I want to be polite. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm talking about a tormenting voice, a tormenting spirit, a tormenting sound. That I want it now. I want that and I want it now. I don't want to go to church, mom. I don't want to go to church, dad. I don't want to go to church. I want this. I want that. I'm hungry. I need this. I have to have that. I have to have a Ferrari. Delilah became like that in Samson. Where's your skin? Tell me you don't love me. If you love me, you tell me then. So you just be careful. <laughs> <laughs> she every day she kept on he then lied to her and he said oh no you uh, tie my hands up and you do this to me and then uh, my strength will be lost and, and two or three times he got tired of her he kept on telling her fake things he got tired of her and eventually he couldn't take the torment anymore he was with this woman it was the wrong woman it was the spirit of aborting the destiny. But it was, he chose. And it was a deception from the beginning to take this child out of his court. And he didn't stand. And so he tells her, no man, it's just my hair. The power's in my hair. The power's in my hair. The power's in my hair. He couldn't take this Delilah anymore. He was sick of the torment. The Philistines came on him, cut off his hair. He was a train. When he's about to die, he's so angry. He threw down his whole palace because he ruled for 20 years as a judge of all of Israel. He breaks the building. He destroys his enemy. He destroys himself. He destroys his family. He destroys everything. No legacy. No destiny. No inheritance. Just and meadow in Gaza. So there's been a war in Gaza for a long time. But the land belonged to God. Amen? Amen. So Samuel dies. And that's what happened to Samuel. Isn't it sad? His brothers, his family, household all came down were brought and were buried with him in Zorah, Eshtol, the tomb of his father, Manoah, even though he judged for 20 years. So God is calling us out of compromise, of our deliverance, of our harlotry. Harlotry is not only a prostitute. Harlotry is having other loves. You heard the word at the beginning, that was a prophetic word. That is, what are your loves? What are your loves? What are your loves? God has laid a foundation because that was not in my word. If there are lovers and we harlot our relationship with God, then it will always come to take us out to abort the destiny because that's what the spirit is assigned. Now we spoke about Athalia. We spoke about Jezebel. Some of the spirits. But the love is different. Because Delilah torments the mind and it makes you weak. And you think you're sick. 
but actually you got a tormenting spirit that's nagging you day and night to sin. So today, whatever it is, I want you to surrender to God. Because God is calling you to surrender. The keys to overcome the spirits. And God is talking to your heart now. Okay? Those of us struggling with it, I see the soul of God going into your hearts. Struggling with the spirit of torment. Maybe it's not you, maybe it's in your household. Maybe it's in your family, maybe it's in your neighborhood, maybe it's in other people that you know. Maybe it's in your bloodline. Whatever it is, we want to deal with it, right? Let's just be real here. When we come into a surrender of our hearts, and that's why God was calling the surrender, he was putting the careful. He calls for surrender of our hearts. He calls for intimacy. Intimacy with God aborts that spirit and throws down Delilah. When we surrender, she doesn't have a stronghold in us anymore. Because the temptation of lust, that's what his fall was. It was lust. Everyone talks in the church about Delilah, Delilah, Delilah's in the church, Delilah's in the church, Delilah's in the church. The Delilah's came in because of lust. How did she enter? The gates of the city are closed. How did the enemy come into your gates and come into your house? It was a temptation and a lust of the heart. So when we surrender, the keys are to surrender your heart to God. Don't have a little bit of this Monday, Sunday, Saturday, you know, a little bit of church, a little bit of all the other things. Stand and make your choices and then be God. No more this and that and that and making excuses about why you can't come into the calling. There is time for God. Because we have 24 hours in the day. And he's asking for one, two hours. I can't understand why we are too busy with the lust. Get rid of the lust. What is it today? Did you lay it down in the altar? Because I know we did. Amen? God was calling us before the word, right? So we lay it down and we're ready now to throw down that spirit. Grow in the gifts of the spirit. In the end times, these are tough times. You saw the warfare you had in the last week. It is tough. Now, some of you guys have been telling me at the family day about the warfare that you had from the time you were born. And I often get to hear that when I have one-on-one -on -one counseling, one-on-one -on -one meetings, and one-on-one deliverance sessions about the warfare you've had. Now, the warfare you've had, you've already gone through it. You don't want to go back there. Grow in the gifts of the Spirit. Grow in the gift of discernment. Discernment is opening up your spirit man to know if you pick up that phone call and if you go to that place and you cross that line, you're going to go back and lose all your deliverance. And you can't keep your deliverance you stand with God. You don't compromise. Because if you go this side and that side, the enemy will come and look, the house is clean. You, all the spirits are gone. The house is clean. But you go back to that place. They come back seven times seven. When you have discernment, you know and you will know before the time. And I'm closing. We're going to lead you into a prayer and then for blessings. Obedience. Obedience means stand. Know the word of God. You need to decree the word of God. There will be no confusion, depression, mental disorders, and deception in the end times. Because remember during COVID, there was a spirit that was unleashed in the earth of increased confusion, deception, chaos, depression. We see depression in the earth like we've never seen it. Young children, the age of 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, are constantly can't sit in the church service and listen to the word because they are completely veiled with the spirit of depression. Because they can't hear anything. You talk to them, but they, they zoned. Zoned out. They have been medicated with high levels of medication because they can't cope with life. And that's what the enemy is doing to our children. But God is saying, let's take our position and stand. Are we ready to do that, church? Yes. Amen? Amen? Can we get our operation and our surgery? Have we got a new heart? Yes. And we have surrendered. It's time for us to go and get our breakthrough. Amen? Mm -hmm. No more playing now. No more games. That's it. We're coming in to the enemy's camp. We're taking everything. Mm -hmm. We're not falling. We saw Delilah coming. We're taking down the gates of our cities, of our communities, of our bloodline, and we have full breakthrough. Amen? And you can. So let us stand.
We'll do the prayer and then we're going to do the blessings. Get ready for the blessings? Okay. So, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, we thank you, we thank you for the cross and the resurrection life. I receive resurrection life today. And I make repentance for disobedience in the heart. Today I surrender all things that have been keeping me for the intimacy of God. I renounce the spirit of lust. I renounce the spirit of love. And I renounce the spirit of Delilah. And I renounce the spirit of Delilah. I renounce the spirit of addiction. I renounce the spirit of addiction. In my bloodline. Over my life. All the way to Adam. And I command those spirits to leave. And I come into a new covenant. With you, Christ Jesus. I declare that destiny over me and my house is restored today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give God a promise. I think there's a shift in the house and the body. And I know it was hard. It was much harder for me to do it and say it than for you to receive it because it's a hard word. And I know for the new lady that came today, she must have thought, do they always have these surgeries here? No, we don't. <laughs> but God is shifting the body of Christ. And the remnant always goes first. So I believe there's a shifting. But in that shifting, we're going to be ready for the gold and the silver. And God is giving us, Paul got the harvest. God is giving us the harvest. Paul got the wealth. And God is giving us the wealth. Paul, Paul got the deliverance. And God has given the deliverance. Paul let everything down. But Jesus gave us full redemption. So we can go in and get the full blessing. Are you ready for the blessings? If you get, get ready um, for, your, for your blessings, you'll see. Um, if you need an envelope, um, let us get ready to give. If you want to sow into this word and you believe that God is giving you a, a, a portion of deliverance, then surrender whatever God is talking to your heart, then let us be obedient to God and release the blessings of our life. We stand with Israel and um, where's our flags today? Okay, we're going to get more flags. But hallelujah. So, so are you ready? Are you ready? Let's hold up our envelopes, our seed, our time, our offering, and let's do the declaration, okay? This is my time, my seed and my offering. It will do for me what God says it will do. It shall be used to, use the, to build the kingdom of God and extend the kingdom of God. The windows of heaven is open over me and my house and overflowing blessings have been released that I do not have room to contain it. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I am the seed of Abraham and the oath that God swore to me is mine. Therefore I release my tithe, my offering and my seed into fertile ground of King Jesus' house of prayer. God is increasing my testimony to share and bring glory to God. So I'm going to just release a blessing over you. You don't have to repeat, okay? So we thank you, God, for our blessings today. And we just declare the deliverance, full deliverance. Everything that has been delayed, we just declare today that we're getting breakthrough. I believe, I see, oh, Jesus, God opening for you, Talia, um, uh, uh, door, door, doors of opportunity, of jobs, of every prayer that's been delayed today. I see supernatural, many harvests, many souls will be changed and transformed through your life. Amen. We declare today, um, we release, I release today, increase over you and your storehouse. I call for jobs, good pay, 
And as I was about to say good pay, the Lord gave me that prophecy for you. Call for jobs with good pay, with benefits, increases, bonuses. God is going to give you a good place of employment. Amen. Where you will fit in and be blessed. You are the beloved. You are the blessed. You are the son. You are the child of God. You no longer an offering. You have come into sonship and the Lord calls you Abba Father. I especially bless business people today and I release doors of business opportunities, ideas for business, for the seven mountains over the house. That where did you open up your business? Oh, I see the anointing for business here. There's an anointing. There's an anointing. I just release business, business in Miami, business all over the world, in Panama, business. For those that are not here, that are in the South Coast and the North Coast, I just release business today in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And if you will have dependable, trustworthy people, God will extend your borders. We declare the Holy Spirit is opening up your eyes of understanding. The Holy Spirit is giving you a fresh revelation. And I declare today a double portion of the assignment of the house in the name of Jesus. I declare today deliverance, wholeness, and healing in your heart. A spirit of breakthrough has been released. And today we get ready in the name of Jesus. I see here a lot of people have been healed. There's a lot of deliverance that as God has done. And when you leave here today, um, you are going to be transformed. Don't go back to the old place. Go to the new land that, and the new blessings that God has prepared for you. Amen? Let's give God praise. Amen. 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 Online, we'd like to so we thank you for being with us and we thank you for staying with the hard word. But with that word, it was a cutting sword that was released, cutting bone and marrow, sword and spirit, uh, bringing a plumb line and bringing alignment. So, we declare today that the same blessing that's here and the glory for you, wherever you are, and the spirit of breakthrough is released over you. Should you want to sow a seed, tithe, offering, the King Jesus House of Prayer is www.kingjesushop.org. We love you and thank you for connecting with us. God bless you. Come, behold, he's come.